Our next uh, award is the prestigious Order of Da Vinci. This honor was established by the 1985 OAA president, Alfred Roberts, and is awarded yearly to an architect who has demonstrated exceptional leadership in the profession, education, or the community. This year's Order of Da Vinci recipient is John Van Nostren. Yeah, let's round of applause. Now, over the course of his long career, John has proven himself to be a visionary, leading architectural and urban development projects around the world. The idea of his firm, SVN Architects Plus Planners, as an integrated practice began in 1978, when John stepped off a plane in Botswana to help the local government design the first squatter upgrading projects in sub-Saharan Africa. This experience led him to, co to combine architecture, planning, and civil engineering as a unified force for change. He registered his firm, his first firm, in 1982, and over the ensuing three decades, his practice evolved always with the same goal of bringing diverse expertise to the wider world. In 2015, John became the founding principal of SVN, the firm he leads today. Under his direction, SVN is renowned for the planning, design, and construction management of places that are sustainable, pragmatic, affordable, and rooted in historic understanding of the site. John's work has been recognized with a lengthy list of national and international awards, including the 2004 Jane Jacobs Prize. He is renowned as a leader in the planning and design of affordable housing, as well as the transportation and transit infrastructure. His comprehensive development plans with indigenous and developing communities in Nunavut, Manitoulin Island, Mongolia, Senegal, and other regions are landmark accomplishments. Whether at home or abroad, John continues to be one of the most provocative thinkers about city building, community building, and social equity. I would like to invite John to the podium to say a few words. I was asked to keep this to a couple of minutes, which for me is impossible. So I've taken the liberty, unlike our previous wonderful free, free speaker, to write my response down. A teacher and friend of mine, Antoine Grumbach, describes his role as an architect, quote, working on the endless incompletion of the city. Since 1945, that's 75 years ago now, and the adoption of the Metropolitan Plan for Toronto, we have lived in what Eugene Faludi called the fully planned and fully built out new city, comprising seven new garden suburbs, the most famous of which is Don Mills, that were planned not to change. This plan, which, serves, which continues to serve as the foundation of our planning regimes across Canada, only addressed only was able to address 35% of the population who could afford that condition. And the tower suburbs, in, this, in the case of Don Mills, that's Thorncliffe Park, were developed as an afterthought. Copies of so-called worker centers that had been introduced in Sweden after, right after World War II. This has led us to cities we live in today where 65% of the population remains ignored and overcrowded, i.e. the occupancy of one-bedroom apartments in Toronto is now reaching a high of seven to eight persons per unit. And still, a complete city remains our goal somehow. And our buildings require enough and, and remains our goal in spite of the fact that anywhere from 70 to 90 percent, in my case, 90 percent of the buildings that we've put up in Toronto require an official plan amendment and rezoning. And I'm sure the same is true for you. There is no plan for the city. That is really what this is about. We need a new plan for an incomplete city with buildings that can respond to change as households grow and change. One of my leading quotes was from Le Corbusier, who said, you know, it's always life that's right and the architect who is wrong. And I quote Ada Huxtable 
in her review of a book that was done on Pessac, 50 of his houses in Bordeaux, which were changed dramatically by the people who lived in them over a period of 30 or 40 years. This is not a confession of error. It was the recognition of the validity of a process over the sanctity of an ideology. Few architects are capable of making that observation because it speaks not to some fixed ideal, but to the complexity and incompleteness of architecture. But this cannot be the role of architects alone. And I'd like to suggest, once again, that every second annual conference we go to should include not just architects, but planners, engineers, and all of the other professions that create to create an ever-changing and growing city for its entire population. This is not a new story of mine. I'm truly honored to be recognized for my 40 years in architecture, and I really deeply mean that. It's, it's been a wonderful possession. It's a profession that gives, not takes. And I'm lucky to follow in the footsteps, footsteps of my constructing, engineering, and surveying family. I thank them as well. Ironically, my grandfather worked closely with Eugene Faludi on Don Mills because he was the first surveyor to figure out how to do curved streets. And his brother built the Don Valley Parkway up to Don Mills. So I'm caught up in Don Mills, as you can see. But time we got on with real life, really. It's always life that's right in architecture that's wrong. Thank you very much. Yes, keep the applause going for John. Great speech. Thank you so much, and congratulations, John.